I'm Glenn Turman. African Americans have long been acknowledged for their creativity and genius in theater, dance, music, art, and literature. But there's another kind of creative contribution African Americans have made, and that's the art of invention. From the moment you turn a doorknob, flick an on-off switch, start your engine, stop for a traffic light, take an elevator, watch a missile launch, or talk on your cellular phone, you've come into contact with an invention or innovation created by an African American. Since records of inventors' race weren't kept when the U.S. Patent Office was established in 1790, we may never know exactly how many patents were issued to African Americans. Now, probably the person most responsible for gathering information on early black inventors was Henry E. Baker, an assistant U.S. Patent Officer and graduate of Harvard Law School. Baker dedicated his life to uncovering and publicizing the contributions of black inventors. Under the auspices of the U.S. Patent Office, Baker sent out letters to lawyers throughout the country asking them to identify any black inventors they may have filed patent papers for. In 1913, patent lawyer B.J. Nolan of Chattanooga, Tennessee wrote, I never knew a nigger to even suggest an idea, much less try to patent one. And I've dealt with them niggers all my life. Baker didn't let letters like that discourage him. By the time of his death, his work produced four massive volumes and uncovered some remarkable inventions patented by black men and women. In 18th century America, one black man of inventive genius made a name for himself, a tobacco farmer named Benjamin Banneker. He resembled Benjamin Franklin in stature and was one of the country's most brilliant mathematicians. Inspired by the theories of Copernicus, Banneker became a self-taught astronomer at age 60. In 1754, at the age of 24, Banneker made a clock entirely out of wood, which remained accurate for nearly 40 years. He was one of the surveyors in the planning of Washington, D.C., and a scientific genius. With borrowed books and instruments, Banneker taught himself the fundamentals of astronomy, keeping a journal of his calculations. Besides predicting the weather and seasons, Banneker used his almanac to extol the achievements of blacks beyond himself. When he included a poem written by the renowned poet Phyllis Wheatley, he wrote, Africans and their descendants are capable of attaining a degree of eminence in the liberal sciences. Benjamin is not the only proof. Wheatley's poem perhaps best echoed their feelings about the injustices of human bondage. Should you wonder from whence my love of freedom sprung? I young and lie by seeming cruel fate was snatched from Africa, fancy happy seat. What pains excruciating must molest, what sorrows labor in my parents' breast. Steeled was that, should and by no misery moved, that from a father sees this babe beloved. Such, such my case. And can I then but pray, others may never feel tyrannic sway. Just as Banneker loved the stars, James Fortin of Philadelphia loved the sea. One of the original abolitionist leaders, Fortin invented a device around 1800 that aided in the control of sails on ships. He amassed a fortune, built his own sail factory, and worked on the Underground Railroad helping slaves to escape. There's an African proverb that says, as the wound inflames the finger, so thought inflames the mind. And despite their circumstances, slaves created a number of inventions before the Civil War. Uh, until they were considered citizens, however, African-American inventors were ignored, prohibited from securing patents, or slave owners took credit for their discoveries. Such was almost the case of Benjamin Montgomery of Virginia, who invented a propeller specifically designed for river steamboats. Montgomery was owned by Joseph Davis, brother of Jefferson Davis, the future president of the Confederacy. Now, when the brothers tried to patent Montgomery's propeller, Attorney General Jeremiah S. Black enacted the decision in 1858 that prohibited owners from doing so. So, as a result, any slave invention during the next 12 years went undocumented. Before the Civil War, a free black man named Norbert Rillo from New Orleans 
revolutionized the sugar industry in a bittersweet story. Born on a plantation and educated as an engineer in Paris, Merlot gave the world its biggest economic sugar fix. Making sugar by the slow, dangerous kettle method inspired Rouleau to find a better way. And on August 26, 1843, he received his first patent for his sugar refining process, or the multiple effect vacuum evaporator, which turned sugar juice into a fine grade of white sugar crystals. Rouleau became a wealthy and influential man in New Orleans, but was still subjected to oppressive race laws. When he was told he'd have to carry a pass to move about the city, Rouleau decided to leave America forever and return to France. <laughs> France's gain was surely America's loss. Raised by my mother, no father. Piss poor, we have a dollar, but it really wasn't a problem. Mama made miracles every day, like she had a genie in a bottle. All I need was a swallow. No Similac in my bottle. And me up soon, gon' follow. No iron in my blood, but that's still on my hip. And there was no deficiency, giving up a hollow. Full gon' follow. I be in control, no toggle. If you get reload on my rival, well known for survival. Read both Quran and the Bible.